What's happening guys, Jim the Game Guru. Okay, today's video, I got some Kanagawa. Very, very cool, interesting, unique game. It's one of those games that is just not popular out there. So many people out there that put videos on Wingspan and these other popular games. Absolutely love it when I come across a game like this that I have never ever seen before. An interesting game where you're in the 1840s and you're in old Japan and you're working under a teacher with of art and you're trying to impress them and learn from them and everybody in the game is a student. So let's dig in this game. I'm going to show you guys the components and just do a quick little uh, how to on it. If you guys are new here, please consider subscribing or following. All right, let's dig into some Kanagawa. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and explain what we have on the board here. So on this left side over here, we have brushes. These brushes are going to enable you to add painting pieces to your overall painting in your studio. Up on the very top, we have diplomas that people will strive for. The, these give you bonus points when you end up obtaining them. And then along, and, and over here we have some storm tokens. Um, I'm gonna explain these diplomas here in more detail in a second. Over here we have the main deck of the lessons that actually turn into studio abilities and painting pieces. Over here we have the Grand Master token and the Apprentice. Basically what these are, are they are the first player token and a token that allows somebody to steal the Grand Master token from them. Then we have starter pieces for your studio and we have four of them here. That's because this game goes up to four players. And then we have the main mat here in the middle where your lessons are gonna get flipped up and put on there. Okay, so since we're gonna be doing two players here, just showing you a quick playthrough, then we're not gonna need all four of these, but I wanted to kind of show you these so you can take a look to see what they are. Each one of them has a different landscape. So this is water landscape right here. We have forest landscape, and then this, whatever the sun one is, I can't remember what the sun one is. I can't remember if it's desert or what, or beach or what, what that is. Um, and then we have mountain. So we have four different landscapes there. And up here on the top right, you'll notice that each one of them has a different season. Summer, winter, spring, and fall, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna put this one in here with the winter and the forest landscape. And over here, I'll, do, I'll put the mountain and the fall on that one, put these two aside. So the diplomas up here are bonus tokens. They are things you can go for one time per color. One time per color, it's very important to understand. So like this particular one right here, these diplomas that are the dark blue, they are diplomas for the wildlife. If you have these certain wildlife in your painting, then you can are you are then eligible to acquire one of these, but you can only acquire one per color set. So once you're able to, so if I if you were able to get like a bison, and I think this might be the elk or something, I can't remember what these these animals are here, but if you have both of these in your painting you are instantly eligible to claim this three-point diploma if you wanted to. If you do, you cannot go claim the four-point and the seven-point. And I like that because this game is not about collecting as many of the diplomas as you can. This game forces you to strategize, to think, can I push my luck to go for the four or the seven? Now, the one thing I will say is that Trying to get the higher diplomas is very, very difficult. It's very difficult because the frequency of these animals are not as often as you would think they are. So each diploma, each color set of the diplomas will have a different type of um, value associated for bonus points. This one is for the wildlife. This one over here is for paintbrushes. So if you have three paintbrushes in your studio, you get one. This one over here is if you have four paintbrushes in your studio, you 
can claim this one for three. So if we look up at this one over here, this purple one, this one here for the one pointer, it says you have to have two of these arrows. Now what these movement arrows do is it allows you to move a brush in your studio from one circle to another. This one here says if you have three arrows. Now this one is very, very difficult. And just to show you how rare it is and how hard it is to get the upper point diplomas, there are only four cards in this deck over here that have the arrow movement tokens or uh, icons on them. That is it, four, and that requires three. So there's a little bit of luck as far as being able to get everything you can get in order to get these diplomas. And and a, a good deal of strategy as well. So I, I feel like this game has a good balance between luck of the draw as well as strategy. The, the storm tokens here, what they do is they will actually allow you to change the season of any of the cards that you get to whatever season you want. This basically makes one of your cards like a, a wild token, like a wild season. It can, it can be any season you want. And the reason why you'd want to get that is because in this game, there is a scoring that if you get the same seasons in a row, as far as you can, you can maximize your points. Because one of the scoring criteria is how many cards do you have in a row in your painting that have the same season. Here we have the main mat, which I really, really like the way it bends. I like the way it looks. It kind of looks like one of those mats you see at a Japanese restaurant or like a sushi restaurant when you're sitting there, you're eating your food. I don't know if this is wood. I can't tell if these are wood pieces or if they're just plastic. I can't tell by feeling them. I mean, I, I'm guessing they're plastic, but they could be wood with some kind of like coating on it but I, I can't tell, but I love the way it moves. I love the way it looks, super awesome. There are four columns you have here. If you're playing a two player game, you're only playing with these two columns. If you're playing a three player, you'll play with these three columns. And you, if you're playing four players, you play with all four columns of the map. Let's take a look at some of these cards. These cards are lesson cards, they're lessons. So there are four types of lessons. There are buildings, there's the wildlife, there's trees, and then there are characters. Now these are the figures that are in your paintings because in this game, you're supposed to try to make the most grandiose painting you can to impress your grand master. Okay, so here, let's go over the anatomy of the card. On the left side is gonna be the studio abilities that you would get if you add this to your to your studio. On the right side are the benefits you get for adding this as part of your painting. You have the bonus points up here, so this will give you one extra bonus point. You have the season that, that, you're, that this is going to be part of. Um, you also have the figure in your, the main figure in your painting, and then down here you have the landscape. That is the landscape that you need in your studio when you put a paintbrush on in order to paint this part of your painting. But the artwork, freaking fantastic. I love the artwork. Just It's just beautiful. I mean, absolutely stunning. My only complaint with these cards is they're so, so small. They're ridiculously small. I do not like that I can't shuffle these cards because they're so small. Like a riffle shuffle is really hard with these cards. These, these little tokens here, these are basically wild. This is a wild card right here. And this says that if I if I add this to my studio, I can paint any any landscape I want with this one card. But you do get minus points, minus two points at the end of the game. So for this great, beautiful power you get, there are there is a cost. And I like that because it makes the game a little bit more balanced. But yeah, all, all of the artwork in here is just is great. Uh, you have Storm. Now, this is not part of the season. Any card that you have that has a Storm on it, this card counts as a wild card. It is part. It can be classified as any one of the seasons. Uh, yep, let's go into more buildings, characters, okay. And then some cards will have multiple figures, right? 
So like when you're going for this diploma over here for the trees, one of the diplomas is if you have three trees, the other one is if you have four, and the other one is if you have five trees in your painting. This is two trees. This would be two trees in your painting. So getting this one tile gets you almost halfway there to get the big diploma for the trees, which is fantastic. Yeah, but you can see how awesome the artwork is. I mean, it's really good. I mean, it, a lot of these kind of repeat, but I absolutely love it. Okay, so we stick that down there. This is our lesson deck. Let's go into the manual really fast. Beautiful manual. Magazine quality paper. I mean, the, the way the manual is laid out, they've done an amazing job on it. It's super easy to read. It looks very pleasing to the eye when you look at it. I mean, you can see how pleasing it looks. It goes over the game elements, it goes over your, your your tiles, it goes over your tokens, the brushes, it goes into starting tiles, your the the um, the grandmaster token and, and the assistant, the setup for the game, it goes into the gameplay through the rounds, uh let's see more gameplay, and then it goes into the scoring, the end game scoring. The end game is triggered by 11 cards in somebody's painting or when this deck gets emptied, okay? When the, the main lesson deck is. And then it goes an explanation of the diploma tiles as well. On the very back, you have a quick reference sheet of the abilities for your studios um, as well as what happens during a round. So it's only 16 pages, it's very, very simple read, and uh, very well done. I absolutely love how they put that manual together. All right, so let's go ahead, we're gonna do a two-player game. So since we're doing a two-player game, we're only going to use the left side. I'm gonna go into two rounds, keep this nice and simple, because uh, once you get, once you see a round or two, you're gonna, you're gonna know, okay, this is how the game's played. It's really, it's not that hard. We're gonna make this player over here the first player. So they get both tokens. Now let's go ahead. The first thing you do is there's teachings from the master. The grandmaster says, okay, let's go ahead and here are your lessons. Now, if you notice there's red squares, right? On this map. These red squares mean that when you pull the lessons off the deck, they do not get flipped face up. They stay face down. So we have these two lessons here. Then the first player says, you know what? Do I wanna do I wanna stay? Do I wanna stay and, and expand my wisdom? Which means that they will not grab any cards. They'll stick around and wait for the next cards to come out. So that, that's your, those are your two choices. Do I wanna stick around or do I wait, wait until the next cards come out for the next row? The max you can go is three rows. Once you hit three rows, then you're eventually, you're gonna get to the point where you have to grab the cards in a particular column. So this next, so this person's gonna say, you know what, I'm gonna wait. This person over here is gonna say, you know what, I'm gonna wait too. So they're not gonna do anything yet. So now we're gonna go ahead and reveal the next cards here. So we have, uh, this one requires two sun. That one requires, uh, that gives you one in your studio. That requires one sun. Now this one here, this next card, does not get flipped face up because it's on a red square. So now we know the only thing that people know is that this is a building card. Okay, so they know if they grab that, they're gonna they're gonna it's gonna add some kind of building figure to their painting, possibly, but they don't know the abilities of this card. So this player is gonna go, and what are they gonna do? So they got a forest. Um, oh, and by the way, each player also starts off with two brushes. So that's one thing it's important to know. And I actually love the way these brushes look, by the way. These brushes look fantastic. It's just nice having them in, in like each, each person's like studio and when they put them down there, it's just, it feels good and just looks good. Uh, okay, so what's this person gonna do? Mm, I don't know, let's see. This will give them a mountain and a sun to add to their studio. But this will give them something unknown. You know, maybe they'll go for the unknown. Let's go for the unknown and see what they get. So the unknown is, okay, wow. They, they get a bonus point 
at the end of the game if they paint that. It is summer, which sucks because summer does not go with their winter right there. Uh, then they have this one for spring. Uh, wow, they didn't have very many. But the other cards over here didn't have any winter either, so they didn't have very many choices. So I'm not sure what they're going to do here. You know what? They're probably going to. Now, if they if they flip this around to use this in their studio to give it an extra ability, then they're going to end up losing this extra point right here. But there's no way that they can paint this because they do not have a sun landscape. So and that's one thing I love about this game with these cards is I love the dual purposeness of these game of these cards because when they go into your studio, they're going to go in like this. They're either going to go in like this as part of your painting or they're going to get flipped around like this and they're going to become part of your studio and give you abilities in your studio, which is pretty awesome. Um, I think what we're going to do is we're probably just going to, man, I think we're just going, we're going to, they're, they're going to lose, they're going to lose that extra token. There's nothing they can do about it. Uh, but now they do, they can paint this one if they wanted to. But do they want to paint this? Probably not. So they're going to flip this around because it doesn't match their season. And then now this person's studio, let me move it up a little bit so you guys can see it better. Now this person's studio is has triple abilities. One is that they can do two landscapes. And then the other one is that they can paint one with the sun. So uh, two forest and one sun. So now we go over this player. This player is gonna go ahead and pull from this. What are they gonna do? They have a mountain, but they none of these none of these pictures are mountains, so they can't paint. And they're both doubled. So this person's probably gonna do the same thing. They're probably gonna flip and use both of these as a studio ability. So now they've just increased their landscape as well. Now we go to the next round. This person's still first player. Let's go ahead and start flipping cards. Okay. There we go. Now they go, hey, do you guys, this player goes, hey, do I want to stick around and gain more knowledge or do I want to go ahead and grab cards from a particular column? Nope, I'll stick around. This person's going to say, I'm going to stick around too. Then cards, additional cards start to get added to the, the pot here. Oh, so this is one with a wild card on it. Okay, so now this person's gonna say, do I wanna grab anything from here? Do I want to? No, I'm gonna stay. This person over here says the same thing. No, I wanna stay. So now we go to the third column. Now they have to actually choose. And now if you notice, what happens is, so there's, you got two cards that are face down because they're on the red block. So they don't know what these are. Now this person here has winter. There's nothing winter on here besides this one with a storm because that one with the storm counts as a wild. So they're probably gonna go for this and, the, and then they're gonna hope that the um, this trees one is winter. No, it is not, dun, dun, dun. So that sucks. Here's what they're gonna do. I think what they're probably gonna try to do is do this Flip this here, add this to their studio. Now they can paint a mountain. They can paint a mountain landscape one. And what they're probably gonna do is they're gonna stick one on mountain here so they can paint this one right here. So we're gonna paint that one there. So we're gonna put that here. It doesn't match with their winter, but whatever, they wanna get something down. Now this one right here requires a water there is no water, but what they're gonna do is they're gonna flip this over a studio in order to get the apprentice and they get one extra bonus point here, right? Why not? Um, but they could not paint that because of the water landscape. And there you go. So now they have one brush there. The brushes will not move. You will not remove them from your studio. They stay on there. And you're gonna find that a lot of these brushes that you put down, in your studio, they don't need to move because even if you leave them on a particular landscape, you can use that and on the next round, you can use that landscape where they're at to paint a part of your picture. 
And you do have an ability of the movement arrows at least one time during your turn by default with your starting card. Eventually, you can, you can actually get other lesson cards that will give you additional move if you, if, if you need them. Okay, so now this person's going to go, and they're going to go ahead and... Let's see what they get. So they've got a winter one, which this person needed over here. <laughs> so what they have fall over here. So this one's fall, this one's summer. So, but they need a water. So what they're gonna do is they're gonna flip this over and add a water to their studio, right? So they're gonna add a water to your studio. They're gonna stick one of their paintbrushes here on water. If I can keep it from falling. Okay, let's try to move this up again here. So they put one of their paintbrushes on water. They're going to go ahead and paint that one. Add it to their picture, just like that. Now this one here is a mountain. They can easily paint this, but this one has a summer. And then you have trees. So there's nothing really matching here as far as the picture. So what the... What they could do is flip this over and add a studio ability of a wild, but then they get minus two points at the end of the game, which is a little painful there for that. So I'm not sure, but if they're going to want to do that, but we'll just say they do that. Why not? They'll add a wild. So now they can paint any landscape. And pretty much if you have a, a brush on this wild, you're never ever going to really move it because that, that can paint anything, right? You have no reason to move it. The only one you'd be moving would be the other one that's not on a wild. And then you get to the next round. And what do we do? Hey, we start over again, right? We flip these and then we continue. And then they decide whether or not they want to go ahead. Oh, and by the way, when I put this down right here, this gave me the apprentice token right here. And since it was the end of the round, I this person would end up stealing the Grandmaster token so they would be first on this round and you keep going in this game until you have one person that has 11 picture tiles in place and then that will trigger the game end or this deck right here runs out which is another thing that will trigger the game end and you just keep making your pictures you just keep making your pictures and you try to get as, as many similar things in a row as you can, especially when it comes to seasons so you can maximize your scoring at the end. Because the scoring at the end is the, the number of picture tiles you have as well as any bonuses and as well as the longest streak of, season, of, of a season cards that you have in your picture. So if you have five, your longest streak is five, summer or whatever, five winter or whatever, then that would be five additional points to your total. And I think there's one other thing to the scoring. Let me see what that is. Um, oh yeah, there's, there's, there's five of them. It's one per lesson card in your print, one per lesson card in your, on your longest sequence of identical seasons, the bonus cards on your lessons, the bonus cards on your diplomas, so these bonus points here in the diplomas, and two points for the player with the Grandmaster Pawn. So whoever has this Grandmaster Pawn will get two points. Points there, points here, and the number of tiles, and you're good. Whoever has the most points ends up winning the game. And that's pretty much it. That's how you play Kanagawa. I like the game, I love its theme. I think it looks beautiful. I like the gameplay in it. It's something different. It's something really, really different. And I love these components of the brushes and everything. Only thing I don't like is I hate how small these cards are. So I'm probably gonna sleeve these cards so I can have an easier time shuffling them. Maybe that way I can do a mass shuffle instead of trying to kill myself doing a riffle, riffle shuffle on those. But that's it guys. If you guys are new here, please consider subscribing or following. If you like this video, please like, and I will see you guys on the next video. Bye.